The Reds were looking to be one of the most dominant teams in the NL Central, at least coming off of 2023 and seeing how their players have developed. But lately, they've been dropping like flies. Let's get into it. Way back, leaps up the wall. For Tustin Eastern Little League. Turned on and crushed. In the air, good carry to right. Yastrzemski. Welcome everybody back to the Touching Bases Podcast. Good to see your smiling faces. And since this doesn't work if I ask, I mean, please consider not subscribing to the channel because I don't want growth. That's not going to work. At the end of 2023, the Reds were looking at going into this new season with a stacked infield. You're talking Jonathan India, Spencer Still, Nueva, Noel V. Marte, Encarnacion Strand, and of course, Ellie De La Cruz, who's taken over the baseball card market, being the face of the very first Topps card release. The outfield was just as respectful having TJ Friedel, Fraley, who came over from the Mariners a couple of years ago, Will Benson, who's fast on the bases. His, the only weakness it really for the Reds is pretty much their pitching and their rotation. I, I just wish that they would be able to build upon that since they have such a stacked and large numbers of infielders, which actually might save them this season, given all of the issues we're about to dive into. Last season, they finished the record with 82 and 80, so just over 500. They finished third in their division. Now, I could nitpick about their rotation and their bullpen, but I mean, it doesn't really need to be touched because of how many injuries that they've sustained. It just got worse this season. Cut to February 2024, this last month as of this video being made, Alex Young, Sam Mole, Ian Gabbat, I might be saying that wrong, all relievers are out with either a back or shoulder issue. I don't know when they'll be returning. I, they're the relievers, hopefully it'll be soon. The shoulder soreness doesn't sound like it's gonna be that crazy, but the back pain is something they have to keep a close eye on. Starting pitcher Brandon Williamson then goes down with a shoulder injury with some sore on the 17th of March. Now we get to the grid of the video, in which we talk about the offensive players. TJ Friedel, their starting center fielder and leadoff hitter, who slashed a 279, 352, and a 467 with a WRC plus last year of 116 and a 4.5 war. Fractures his wrist and is unknown when he'll be able to return. Obviously, a fracture is going to be a big deal. It's not a strain or a tendon, so there's not really much as far as surgery to fix it. It's just wait and see. Noel V. Marte, their starting center fielder, fielder who was very promising looking at him at the end of the last season is suspended for PED use. I made a video about this a little bit earlier in the month. He won't be back for 80 games, so I'm guessing that's probably going to be about mid-June. Now, Matt McClain. This guy was my favorite guy on the team aside from Ellie, but Matt McClain was consistent his rookie year last year. He had 16 home runs with a 290 batting average. He nearly hit 300 in his rookie season. Now, he only played in 89 games, but that speaks a lot for for the numbers that he was able to put up in 89 games in just about half a season, where he slugged a 507 and had a WRC plus of 128. His war was a 3.2 for half of a season, but on March 18th, he went to dive for a ball in spring training and he came up with a soreness in his left shoulder. They didn't think it was that big of a deal, but they had a check out by a doctor. They said it's not really anything crazy, but he decided to get a second opinion in LA. They basically said, we should probably get you in for surgery. You have a labrum cartilage damage that needs to be repaired so yesterday and i'm making this video on the 27th he had surgery and it's unknown when he's going to come back that is a major bat a huge offensive tool for the reds going into 2024 and i'm hoping that he can come back mid-season but again i don't know about cartilage repair and how long it takes to heal for those things and what exactly are the movements that would trigger or cause irritation or maybe re-injure that ligament in his shoulder now just taking a look at fan graphs i don't know what this means entirely for the Reds because we don't know exactly what the manager's planning for opening day. Now, opening day is tomorrow, which is problematic. They've obviously been planning this because they knew he was going to get surgery before that information was released. So this is a big blow for the Reds. It's plain and simple. It really does suck. Luckily, they have some very versatile players, including Spencer, Spencer Steer, who's probably going to be able to take over that outfield spot for Fredel. And that's a huge benefit to having him not only be a good bat in their lineup, but also being able to play play in the outfield along with first and third. Jonathan India is slotted to go back into play second base. He didn't do entirely too bad last season. I know he's one of the veterans on the team and everybody says that he's kind of cooling off, but I don't have a problem with seeing him in the lineup if it was my team, especially since he's still consistent. Now, luckily during the offseason, Candelario was picked up by the Reds from the Nationals. That will be able to fill that third base position that Marte was supposed to take this season. Lastly, over at first and Spencer Steele's Pro 
probably going to be going into the outfield. We're looking at Encarnacio Strand. Instead of him being on DH, he'll be taking over at first. So it all does seem to work out. Having that extra bulky infield selection kind of saved them in this long run, if you ask me. They had way too many infielders, and it was stacked in every position. And because of that, the injuries and the suspensions, now they had somebody to fall back on instead of reaching into their AAA. Now, the only thing that I'm a little bit questionable on is the DH spot. They slotted, at least on Fangrass, to have Nick Martini take over the DH. Now, he's very questionable as far as his bat goes. If you're a designated hitter, you should be dominant at hitting. Like, I don't know how to be clear about that as possible. I understand they're running out of players, but there is one guy that was very impressive during the spring training, and that would be Stuart Fairchild. During spring training, he walked 2% of the time, and then he struck out only 20% of the time. Now, 20% sounds like a lot, but with all the at-bats that he had at spring training, his average was at a 333 with a slugging percentage of 667. WRC plus rating for spring training alone was a 164. He's definitely proven that he's hot right now. Whether that will be able to be maintained in the regular season starting tomorrow, it, that's still up for debate, but I would much, I'd feel much more comfortable having Fairchild in there as a DH versus having Martini in there. Now, this is a huge setback for the team, but I still think they can contend for the first place spot, at least in the beginning of the season, depending on whenever these guys come back. Their pitching is not the best. I'm looking forward to seeing Andrew Abbott pitching this year. I, I don't know how he's going to do, but I, I think he has really good stuff. I just hope that it translates in the MLB. And then, of course, Hunter Green, I think, is going to have an ecstatic year. Last year was, I mean, mediocre to, to okay. I, I, I have high hopes for him. The rest of the guys that are pitching, I'm not... I'm not too high on Ashcraft and, and Montas. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like, if you're a Reds fan, you might have a little bit more love for, for these pitchers, but they they don't seem too promising to me. Every single pitcher on this staff is rated to have an, a mid to high fours ERA, which is not entirely too good. The only dominant pitcher as far as strikeouts goes would be Hunter Green, and they're projecting him to be about 180. So Hunter Green will be fun to watch, but can the other pitchers hold back the offense of all these other teams? But let's also keep in mind what other teams are in the NL Central that are probably contenders. We're probably looking at the Cubs. They seem to be relatively healthy they brought back bellinger who had a great year last season they added a pitcher with shota imanaga so we'll see how he can translate his abilities in the mlb as this will be his rookie season christopher morale seems like he was still a hot bat and now that he's moving over to third base maybe defensively it won't be the best but his bat is still going to be deadly for the cubs the other teams that normally i would can make contenders would be the brewers and then also the cardinals now the brewers lost corbin burns and as far as i know brandon woodruff is still out with an injury so their pitching staff is reliant upon Freddie Peralta and I believe Wade Miley is also out with an injury so their pitching staff is struggling and I think that the Reds can still take advantage of that with who they have. They did add Reese Hoskins during the offseason but I don't know if that one bat is going to be enough to power them through to first place in 2024. The Cardinals on the other hand with Sonny Gray getting signed over coming from the Twins he is out for at least opening day and who knows for how long for moving forward that was going to be their ace rolling into 2024. Lars Newport bar is going to be out. We'll have to wait and see when he's able to make it back. As we're about to start opening day, Edmund also won't be able to make the starting roster for the Cardinals. Like, don't get me wrong though, like Nolan, the Nolan boys are are very good hitters. I would say that they didn't do as good as what they could have done last season, and maybe they can do that this year, especially Arenado. Mason Wynn, I'm really excited to see him at shortstop. I hope that he can perform and really put numbers with his bat defensively. He looked excellent. And then Jordan Walker did very good last year and I'm just hoping he's able to improve in that in the outfield at least if I'm looking from the perspective of the Cardinals but that is still a big lineup for the Reds to go against especially with their pitching staff as is so even with the injuries I still think that I would slot the Reds as the number two in the NL Central right behind the Cubs because the Cubs don't seem to have very many issues there they're just rerouting some players but they all seem mostly healthy and they brought in some new guys and someone that they can depend on as a bat with Cody Bellinger so what do you guys think on this whole thing is Matt McClain basically the last straw for the Reds going into 2024 season or are you not worried at all if you're a Reds fan please consider subscribing I will ask you because I do like that obviously I uh, have Ellie De La Cruz's signed jersey there so I'm a fan as well and I also used to live in Cincinnati for a little bit when I was a kid so I got a little soft spot for the Reds I'm hoping they do well this season and if you can like the video and we we'll see you on the next one later